How's it everyone? I'm gonna do a quick video what is actual science but the cool thing about this video is that I'm going to be using ChatGPT. Um, yeah, I don't wanna think so I'm gonna get AI to help us out. So it starts off quickly. So the breakdown I gave it was like, I want to make a short YouTube video on natural science and I want to use a South African context um, as background. So I'm gonna be adding a bit of information onto what it gave us. So intro, what is natural science? It says it's a discipline that applies math and stats methods to assess and manage risks, particularly in the fields of insurance, finance, pensions, and investments. Actuaries are experts who use data, probability theory, and financial principles to predict future events and their potential financial impact. So insurance, think of things like my way, think of pineapple, think of naked, um, how they get you your premiums. They use mathematics and statistical methods to basically assess and manage risk. So what's the risk for car insurance? The risk is that you get into a car accident. So they use empirical data, basically, if you, let's say I'm driving a Suzuki Swift, I'm a 30 year old uh, female and I live in Cape Town. They look at all the 30 year old females that live in Cape Town and historically how many accidents they've had, how, how much those accidents have cost to repair that Suzuki Swift. And then when someone else comes in, let's say Pumla comes and gets a quote, it's basically um, an average of how much Tando and everyone else who's a 30 year old female who lives in Cape Town and let's say who's been driving for five years, um, how, how much their accidents have cost the company. And then that's what Pumla's premium gets based on. If Pumla is slightly more risky than Utando, she'll get the premium that's a bit higher than the risk pool. If Pumla is less risky than Utando, let's say she's been driving longer or she lives in a more secure area then she'll 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 have a risk that's below the risk pool and then her premiums will be a bit lower i know there's a lot of chatter online about what insurance premiums are based on and it's a scam and scam. it's really not if my suzuki swift is worth two hundred and fifty thousand, i want to make sure that if something happens to it my money is still safe so it obviously goes down in value so when it's two hundred and twenty thousand, I, I still want to make sure that it's the same um, that it's still covered so that if, if let's say i get a complete write-off i still have my money in the sense that i still get the payout i can replace it with a car or choose to do what, whatever i want to do so that's insurance um finance think banks so banks hire a lot of actuaries a lot of quant analysts there's a big overlap um but basically think of pricing so i don't know if you guys remember but during covid a lot of the banks um, cancelled that fee that you pay when you withdraw money from other ATMs. So if I bank with FNB and I withdraw money from a Capitec ATM, I get charged. Why? Because behind the scenes, FNB needs to go and pay um, Capitec for the amount of money that they that I've withdrawn. So that service, right? Because I'm depleting their resources. So during COVID, uh, uh, on COVID, sorry, I'm lying. During the Ju July, was it July Andres? The strikes in South Africa, I'm not sure which year, I can't remember. But the, what's in the banks had to reduce that because, or they had to remove it completely because ATMs were destroyed. So people didn't have ready access to the ATM that they needed to go to. So that seems like a small thing to you and me, but behind the scenes, the modeling teams at the banks had to actually go and calculate how much money are we losing out of this um, because they obviously make a profit above and beyond settling with other banks. But they also had to make provisions for the fact that, look, moving forward, is this something that we should keep off or not? They obviously didn't. But it's also something that they priced in for, let's say, the card. Uh, or the segment that you're in um, annually. So that's just something that you have to keep in mind. So that's that's where you would get like a lot of modeling and finances, just a small example. Pensions, well, if you start saving, let's say from 30, you start working at, let's say 30, you start saving towards a pension. Um, because South African pensions now are, uh, I'm gonna get it confused. I won't say defined, let me actually look it up. 
I don't like to open my Google. Um, but I think it's defined contribution. Yes, what that means is whatever you contribute is what you get. Whereas previously, it was defined benefit. So defined benefit used to say, Tanda's at 30, she just started working. She's contributing. She's contributed a million. She's going to get a million. Now it's defined contribution. If I contribute 300,000, that's what I'm going to get on retirement or when I withdraw. Obviously, there's nuances like two pot, etc., etc. That's actually a good example. So two pot would have used a lot of actuaries, would have used a lot of quant analysts. They would have had a lot of people in the background crunching the numbers to say, what does this look like three years time? So SARS was doing a lot of provision or not provisions. They were doing a lot of calculations about how much they're expecting um, the tax from the the the, the, the two pot pension. Um, Multi managers and asset managers were doing a lot of calculations as to how much they're going to get in terms of withdrawals, how much they would need to liquidate in their funds um, for two parts. So that's that's an actuary's job. Investments, obviously, in the investment world, there's modeling, there's um, a lot of actual science behind and a lot of risk management um, behind that. You can long, you can short, but you also don't want, you want to have risk limits and exposure limits so that you're not holding 100% of Capitec and zero of another bank. And then when Capitec is doing well, you're obviously doing well in the portfolio. But then if Capitec doesn't do well, you've got nothing else to sort of balance that out. So you want to say, okay, maybe 50% Capitec, 25% another bank, 25% another bank. That's just an example. Um, data, probability theory, financial principle, predict future events. Yeah, that's basically it. Then we're going to chat about the core principles of XI. So mathematical modeling, probability and stats, financial management. So you'll see a lot of math. <laughs> so at UCT, we did math up until second year. So MAM 1000 and MAM 2000W. And then there's a lot of statistics. Statistics is the actual major virtual science. So we do that for three years, right? So math modeling is basically simple. It's mathematics. Probability and statistics are an application of math. So you have to have math as your grounding and then a, a, a statistics is an applied a science, right? So you're applying the math um, um, and, 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 and to data, to, to real life situations. And then financial management is pretty, pretty clear cut, right? So they give an example here where you calculating premiums, you're setting aside reserves and ensuring that insurance policies or pension plans remain financially stable. I'll give you an example with that. So every year they, you get a policy anniversary, let's say for your car insurance, let's stick with that. Let's say Tando's with Naked um, and her policy anniversary is in July. So every July, Naked will go and do a calculation to say, okay, Tando's um, um, car has gone down in value by this much, um, but then our costs have gone up by this much and then compare it comparing it to how much cars in the second hand market are, how much a replacement value would be for the car, they get to a number, let's say 6%. So they send me on my policy anniversary, they'll send me a note that says, hey, your premiums are going up by 6%. I can call and say, hey man, like that's a bit high for me. I'm going to go and get a, pre, a, a quote from a, a, another policy uh, um, company, which you really should, right? Um, and then I can sort of pay them against each other like that. Or I can say, okay, 6% is fair, thanks. Then they'll send you the revised policy schedule and then the debit order goes up. And then that's basically it. So that's essentially what an uh, actuary would be doing. So that is part of the financial management. And yeah, that is what they would be doing. So recalculating your premiums because they change so sort of annually. Then you've also got the role of actuaries in managing fin risk. So risk assessment and pricing, I've spoken about risk assessment and pricing in the context of what? Your insurance. Um, financial stability, so it's to ensure that insurance companies, pension funds, and other financial institutions manage enough reserves to cover future liabilities. I'll give you an example. So let's say you've got a pension with ABC, right? That's the company that you're saving your pension through. Um, they have to report let's say quarterly or annually to show that they actually are keeping the money such that when you retire, there's money there. It's not a case of you keep paying, 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 paying. And then when you retire, you're like, can I have my money? And they have the ability to say, we don't have the money. So that is very important. They have to maintain financial stability and they have to account for where your money is getting invested 
how it's getting invested to ensure that there doesn't come a time or to reduce the likelihood of there being a time whereby a tando goes there and says, hey, I'm retiring next month. What are we doing with the money? Here are my bank details. And they're like, oh, sorry, for the past 30 years, we've been saving the money, we've been investing the money, but we're not sure if we're going to be able to pay you out. So that's financial stability. And that's why the Financial Service Authority, Financial Service Conduct Authority is very strict um, about working with businesses that are registered because they have to account and they have to report. And then you've also got investment actuaries so, or investment strategies. So actuaries help in making investment decisions, balancing risk and reward um, with the volatility that we have in our market, mainly like being an emerging market, it comes with the territory. Um, that's the kind of thing that there's opportunity for an actuary to sort of play around with different um, um, investment uh, assets and timing of cash flows and, and all of that. So that's where the opportunity is in risk management for actuaries. And then they're saying here the relevance in various industries. I guess we've spoken about insurance, right? But another thing we haven't spoken about is the um, NHI. So in NHI, there's a lot of actual work happening behind, even before it came onto the ground. For, for, for the government to actually propose something like that, there has to be a lot, a lot of number crunching behind. So insurance and health, um, pension and retirement planning, like I said, two-pot system. Banking investments, We most of us have a banking account, so there's a lot of actual science that's behind that. And then, like I said here, public sector and healthcare. So just even the budget. So the, the budget speech is coming up now in Feb. So there's a lot of actual work and a lot of number crunching behind telling, you know, national treasury or advising national treasury of this is where you need to be, you know, issuing this year. There's a lot of redemptions coming up as well, 2025, 2026. So that's also something that they sort of need to balance. And it's all in the number crunching. It's all just sitting at the laptop. Okay, so I'm going to read the conclusion. So basically, actual science is really useful in helping businesses, governments, and individuals manage risk um, in a really unpredictable world. Um, and then we're also people that look at multiple factors. So that impact, um, um, I guess, finances. So inflation is one. I know we're always checking for the monthly CPI print, um, unemployment, that's always something that, you know, is closely monitored in South Africa, um, which is a very high number at this moment. We've got climate change, so that's also going to be something that's growing. We're going to get a lot of uh, climate information, or oh, not information, I don't want to say, but climate change or environmental science is going to be closely integrated into ASA notes and a lot of the content that ASA is teaching, that's the Association of South African Actuaries, to basically make actuaries more aware of that space so that we can grow in that space and that we can help and we can understand it better because it needs number crunches. So we need to be more aware of the context that is about global, global, global warming and climate change. And then actuaries help provide stability and make informed decision making. Um, if you're interested in mathematics, stats, and financial solving, problem solving, AXI is a rewarding career that offers op opportunities across various industries. I cannot stress enough the fact that it offers opportunities across various in industries. It doesn't have to be strictly, um, you know, finance. You can work at Sasso, you can work at Engine, you can work at Total. There's so many data scientists that I know that are all over and quantitative analysts and to some extent, it's all the same. It's basically a title. So every two months, or not every two months, every two weeks or a week, I will literally go and change what my LinkedIn says in terms of my title, depending on what I feel like, or depending on what I've read or what I'm thinking at the time. So you can be an actual analyst, you can be a quantitative analyst, you can be a data scientist. It's all similar work, depending, obviously, there are specialties. Um, so if you read a job speak and it says actual scientist and you or actual science analyst or some do say actual scientist, which isn't factually, you know, correct. But if you're reading that and then you put off because you don't have an actual science degree, you should still apply for the job. Because if you read further and you look at the job speak, it's most likely things that you are either learning or things that you're aware of and that you can pick up on the job. So don't pull yourself off simply because of that. Um, but yeah, that is actual science, I guess, in the South African context. 
So this is the prompt that I gave ChatGPT, and then I took you through what ChatGPT told me to say. Um, when I cut the video here, it was supposed to be nice and short. What is actual science? I know a lot of matriculants are interested in it, and I hope this video helps. Thanks.